Cozy games are a big thing in video games right now. And how could you get cozier than Cozy Grove? I've been playing this one off and on for a while now, actually. I figured it's probably time that I actually talk about it. I will say it took me a little bit of time to properly get into the mindset of this thing. Because uh, when I first tried playing it, I tried playing it on my Twitch stream. And that was a mistake. Because when I'm playing on Twitch, I'm very goal focused. Like, what's the next thing I need to accomplish? And then I go about trying to accomplish that. And that is absolutely the wrong mentality to be coming at this game, especially early on. Because... A lot of its features are going to feel annoying or um, honestly, as it goes on, it'll feel like just too much unless you approach it in a, I'm just going to hop on and do a couple of things because I, I feel like relaxing for 20 minutes or half an hour. That's how you need to approach this. Not goal focused, not... I need to do everything focused. Like, you can, if you want to sink two hours in a day with it, once you've been with it for a while and have expanded out the setting a bit, you can. That's possible. But, like, I I have found the best enjoyment just logging in and, like, seeing all these things that I could do and being like, I'm going to do that and that and that. And I'm good. And sort of having to realize that I can be okay with just that. That's where I've gotten my enjoyment from this. So this is kind of uh, sort of Animal Crossing Stardew Valley by way of Spiritfarer. So its theming is that you are on an island that is inhabited by the spirits of the dead. And you're like there to help. You're, you're a spirit scout and you're there to help them. Uh, you know, whether it be help them kind of remember who they were, remember sort of the important moments of, of their own lives, et cetera, et cetera. That's sort of where the spirit fair influence comes in. I will say that while that is an interesting theme to integrate into something like this, and again, spirit fair in a lot of ways was sort of my gateway game into uh, a lot of the more classic cozy games like Stardew Valley because I, I did get into sort of the the workaday nature of it, you know, like, oh, well, I need to, I need to check the orchard. I need to, I need to do some recipes. I need to harvest the wheat. You know, I need to milk the cows. Like getting into that in Spirit Fair was what got me to try out this genre in general. But this doesn't make the marriage as well as Spirit Fair does. I think what I'll say is that it's, it is not bad, but for me, at least the, the thematics of the fact that I am, I'm not just helping out people, I'm helping out the spirits of the dead just doesn't really impact my experience one way or the other. Like it, it feels very incidental, um, to things. It doesn't feel as keenly integrated. I mean, part of that might be because these characters don't have anywhere near the personality. I think part of that is a limitation of the art style. Um, the characters, they're all bears of some sort. They're very blocky. Now, they still look very different uh, between costuming and some very uh, quirky decisions and designing some of them. So, like, they're distinct visually, but they don't have that same degree of personality. Like, I, I couldn't tell you off the top of my head the name of literally any of the spirits from Cozy Grove. But I am always going to remember from Spirit Fairy... Fairy, Spirit Fairer, Stanley, or Gwen, or Summer, or Alice. Like, I'm I'm not always gonna remember every character's name off the top of my head, but the ones that hit me, yeah, I'm not gonna forget them anytime soon. I'm still playing Cozy Grove intermittently, and I, I can't remember any of these people's names. And I will grant after a little while, I kind of just checked out of the story bits. Like I advanced this story and it gives me more information and I'm, I'm kind of skipping through the dialogue. So I, I, I will admit I did kind of mentally check out on that aspect because I realized quickly that's not where I'm getting my enjoyment from this. That was something that enhanced the experience a lot at Spiritfarer. But here I was actually just getting my enjoyment from doing the activities alone in and of itself. I, I can't really vouch for how effective the stories of these characters are 
if you do get into them, because as I said, I kind of checked out and I'm not really paying attention anymore. So what I at least can say is they didn't grab me, but they also don't detract. The The game doesn't hinge on those working. So like, for instance, Spirit Spiritfarer is about the relationships that you build with these people and what you learn about them. So if the, if those characters don't work for you, there really isn't a purpose in playing Spirit Spiritfarer. Here, demonstrably, I am proof that you can not particularly connect with the characters, but still get enjoyment out of this thing. I've put like dang your 70 hours into this over the last few months playing it intermittently and um it it as i said as it goes it can feel very big and very busy because as it goes not only are you expanding out and, and meeting new spirits to help but the actual island gets bigger so the amount of area that you could be finding things you know because a lot of this is fetch quests and like, there'll be hints like, oh, well, I saw this around, something like that. And maybe they'll give you something that's a real specific um, sort of visual marker. Like, I know what that is. Or maybe they'll describe something that's like, okay, well, there's like three of those dotted around the island. And I can't remember if there's some in some of the new areas that have opened up. And the thing is, if you find yourself getting frustrated by that, there is an in-game hint system. It technically, like, costs some of the resources, like... Um, you have to pay it like a hundred coins, but honestly, that initially annoyed me. But by the time I actually started using the hint system, once the island was big enough that not for everything, but every now and then I'd be like, I don't feel like hunting all over the island to find this thing. Will you just tell me where it is, please? Um, by the time I hit an island size where that was something I was doing intermittently, a hundred coins was nothing. Like. I, I, I made that within five minutes of playing every dang every dang time I signed on. So, um, I I I like I like I think I feel like the hundred coin is enough to get people to not start abusing it at the start of the game, but it also makes it incredibly accessible as the island actually gets big enough where it's a lot more likely that you that if you didn't have it, you'd start going, "Where is this freaking thing?" Which would be the death of the feel of the laid back, cozy, hey, how's everybody doing today? Kind of just feel and aesthetic and uh, and tone that the thing's going for overall. So I think the hint system was actually uh, quite a good idea. As you start making money, especially if you figure out the the easy ways to make a lot of money, which I figured out a few uh, after after a little bit, um, the some things you would just upgrade to max real quick. But again, that's not really the point. The point is to just come and bum around and see what's there and like, oh, different time of year. It's winter. Oh, there's snow. And it's not like on an in-game time where it's like when we hit winter months here where I live, there was snow. And um, having things like, oh, look, the, the little critters that are running around that you can catch with your with your insect net. Oh, they're different. Oh, that's right. Different time of year, different animals wandering around. Like there's just nice little touches like that that make me not come back compulsively, but every now and then go, you know what, I think I'll check in. And it's kind of nice to have. I think it's something that I'll probably check in on intermittently for a while, which isn't something that I do with Spirit Fair. Like I love Spirit Fair, but that is, being driven by the story and the characters as much as it is, it's not something that I just like, I'll just check in on that. No, if I'm going to sit down and do it, I'm going to like get into this thing. This, I, I just, it's very good as a casual game because you just, you dip in and out. And if you can get into the mindset of none of this is pressing, you do what you feel like, then it, it just is relaxing. Like if you get obsessive about, I need to do everything that is available to me every time I log in and I need to log in every day, like this could become a monkey on your back real quick if that's how you approach it. So I, if that's the kind of gamer you are, I actually don't think I'd recommend this. But if you if you just want something to dip in and out of, just be like, oh, let's um, let let's see how how my how my deer are doing. Let's check the acorn trees. Let's let's uh let's harvest the the flowers like yeah it's nice for that cozy grove took me a little while to fully appreciate it but yeah this is this has been an intermittent thing for me for a little bit now yeah, and i like it 
It's not like a top five game or anything, but I like it. Have you played this? What did you think about it? If you haven't, what is your preferred cozy game? I think Stardew Valley is kind of the big one in that space, but whatever your thoughts are, drop something down in the comments. Let's talk about it. Patreon pays the bills and enables me to do this as my living. I played this on my Twitch stream, link for that and other things that I do in the description. Even if you don't want to check that stuff out or help me out that way, don't worry too much about it. We take a relaxed attitude around here so you can just come on back next time you need a break. And I'd like to thank my highest supporting patrons, Robin Moore, Zubin Lafula, Goddess Elida, Oliver B, Tarak, the thing that goes doink in the anime, Ruth, Solitary Pictures, Ulrich Bogdan, Geek Filter, Linda Walters, Jen, Auntie Kate 808, Becky Sparks, Frenobulax, The Poodle, Robin Powell, T Love, Tracy Scrabbit, Angry Casperl, Dave Hall, Quite Bearish, Rosalind Bennett, Pal Barava Joggle, and Mara G. Uh, yes, we do have new rats in the house. Whoa, you want it? We actually have two. This is Brownie. I couldn't get Sprite to come out, but say hi. Thanks for the support.